the world's deadliest amusement park. If you're from New Jersey, there's no doubt you haven't heard of Action Park already. Locals have nicknamed it Class Action Park, Friction Park, and Accident Park. Those names are tame compared to what actually happened. Located in Vernon, New Jersey, the park opened to the public in 1978. It featured three different attraction areas. The Alpine Center, home to the impressive 2,700 foot long Alpine Slide, Motor World, an area containing motorized vehicles, tanks, and boats, and Water World, which had various water-based attractions and was the site of the most casualties. Interestingly enough, Action Park's Water World was one of the first modern American water parks. It's almost as if all of the thrill seekers who went there turned out to be test subjects. Under the vision of one man, Action Park would foster a careless and dangerous atmosphere. Eugene Mulvahill. Eugene had been the founder and designer of various attractions, and so was blamed for many of the park's precarious conditions. You see, Eugene didn't want his park to be like other amusement parks. He wanted thrill seekers to be in control of their experience to their fullest desires. This means allowing patrons to control the speed of their rides on attractions like speedboats and the Alpine Slide giving them a sense of autonomy. Mulva Hill's mindset was the collective theme of the entire park, fun at all costs, conveniently shifting the blame on the individual rather than the park or himself. He also had a terrible track record by participating in MLM schemes through a fake insurance company, which added a criminal element to his park. In the early 70s, Eugene took part in multiple pump and dump schemes, leading to his company, Mayflower Securities, getting suspended by the SEC on the grounds of selling its customers worthless securities in a bankrupt electronics company. As a result, Eugene was banned by Wall Street and had to find a new livelihood elsewhere. He, along with some old partners, pooled their money and bought the Vernon Valley or Great Gorge Ski Resort in upstate New Jersey. The resort found success during the winter but Eugene and his co-owners wanted to generate income every season if possible. In 1976, the group decided, why don't we build a water park? Two years later, Action Park was born. Little did newcomers know, most of the attractions were certified death traps. To add on to the overall ignorance, the park itself sold plenty of alcohol. You already know, every teenager was asking their older brother to buy them a beer at a kiosk. Combine alcohol consumption with haphazard attractions or machinery, and you are bound for serious problems. One example of machinery that is safe is today's video sponsor. Which is why today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. Welcome to Fresh Ball Fall. It's the season of pumpkin spice and making sure your boys look nice. So you can sip some apple cider in a fall breeze and use Manscaped products to take care of your sack. Whether you're brand new to Manscaped or you already use their products, I'm sure all of you could use the Platinum Package 4.0. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology. And both are waterproof so you can keep scaping as the weather changes. In addition to shaving, you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with the Ultra Premium Body Wash and Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner. And don't forget to apply their aluminum-free Ultra Premium Deodorant. And don't worry, it's not pumpkin spice, it's cologne-quality fragrance. Manscaped even threw in two special gifts for their Platinum Package 4.0, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Boxers. Get the Platinum Package this fall and go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use the promo code Filion at checkout. And thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Sadly, Action Park's carelessness was overlooked and it was able to host thousands of Americans for 18 years. In order to understand how horrific Action Park really was, let's take a look at some of their attractions. The Alpine Slide was the most notorious attraction for causing injuries. 
The slide was 2,700 feet long and descended from the mountain slope. Riders would sit on a sled and travel the designated path until it ended at the bottom. Sounds simple enough. However, the sleds themselves were small and too maneuverable, probably not the safest thing to use going down an actual mountain. The chutes, which the sleds were supposed to travel along, were made of fiberglass, concrete, and asbestos. Without a doubt, the holy trinity of materials you don't want to use. If you happen to fall out of your sled, at least you would tumble into one of the many hay bales set up to cushion your fall. Well, what do you think would happen? You fly off the alpine slide, grinding across a mixture of fiberglass, concrete, and asbestos like a fucking meat crayon, or you land comfortably into a hay bale like you're in Assassin's Creed. State records indicate that the Alpine slide was responsible for 14 fractures and 26 head injuries. According to Joanne Austin in Revisiting Traction Action Park, quote, the stick that was supposed to control the sled's speed in practice offered just two options, extremely slow and a speed described by one former employee as death awaits. Terribly speaking, it is no wonder that the first death at Action Park would occur at the Alpine Slide. In a horrific turn of events, 19-year-old George Larson was thrown from the slide and hit his head on a rock. He passed away at the hospital several days later. Larson's death would be brushed under the rug by Action Park officials. They claimed that he was an employee, effectively exploiting a loophole where his death did not need to be reported to state regulators. In the 2020 documentary, Class Action Park, George's mother and brother explain how the park used this tactic in order to get out of reporting George's death. Somehow, this incident did not shut down Action Park or even the ride. Morbidly enough, one can make the argument that it made the park even more popular. Besides the Alpine Slide, you had super speedboats. Here, you would drive some discount jet ski around a snake-infested pond until enough gasoline leaked out of it, indicating the ride was over. In all seriousness, this entire attraction was half-assed and insanely dangerous. In the mornings, employees would take rides around the pond to scare away snakes or snapping turtles before opening the attraction for visitors. Surprisingly, super speedboats didn't last long, and was hilariously rebranded as bumper boats, but nothing changed. Also, if you were above six feet and decided to try out the bumper boats, you were probably leaving in an ambulance. It's noted that tall riders were unable to fit their legs into the boat properly, so they would just dangle them off the sides. If hurtling down a death mountain, or crashing into each other in an Indiana Jones pond isn't up your alley, then there's the more peaceful kayak experience, right? No. This was a rushing whitewater course with dozens of people all flying down 1,000 feet of rapids. Instead of snapping turtles or snakes, all you had to worry about was giant electrical underwater fans. These fans manipulated the current to give it the whitewater effect. During one such experience, a guest who had flipped his kayak accidentally touched an open live wire connected to a fan. 27-year-old Jeffrey Nathan was struck instantly by a 19-ampere electric current. He was taken to a hospital, but was later pronounced dead due to cardiac arrest. Thankfully, the ride was permanently closed after this incident. Again, the park's founders did not take responsibility declaring that a state-regulated safety report cleared their name. Without a doubt, two of the most popular attractions at the park were the Tarzan Swing and the Tidal Wave Pool. The Tarzan Swing was just as it sounds. Besides people hanging on the swing for too long and not jumping off properly, the injuries were surprisingly minimal. However, the spring-fed water below was notoriously colder than other areas of the park. In 1984, due to the icy temperature, an unknown man passed away from a heart attack after experiencing cold water shock. The tidal wave pool got the nickname Grave Pool because of how many times lifeguards had to dive in to save someone. Unfortunately, 
they did not always get there in time. From 1982 to 1987, three individuals drowned at Action Park's Waterworld. 15-year-old George Lopez, 20-year-old Donald DePass, and 18-year-old Gregory Grandchamps. Action Park, on the other hand, dodged phone calls left and right. They couldn't bother with answering any questions pertaining to the young men who died under their watch. The owners of Action Park were too busy looking for new and improved ways to entertain their guests. So they built the Cannonball Loop. Besides looking like something straight out of Jackass, this slide was only open for a limited time throughout Action Park's existence. According to Tom Fergus, a former employee of Action Park, wrote that Cannonball Loop was so intimidating that employees reported they were offered $100 each to test it. Fergus, who described himself as, quote, one of the idiots, took the offer. He later said, $100 did not buy enough booze to drown out that memory. Rumors circulated that test dummies had been dismembered or decapitated as they had been sent down the loop. Even Eugene Mulvihill's son, Andy, described how he was the first person to go down the cannonball loop. He tested it, wearing full hockey equipment. Some people got off the ride with deep lacerations and teeth having been knocked out. In the HBO documentary Class Action Park, a Navy physician explains how riders experienced approximately 9 Gs of acceleration as they went through the loop. Another attraction that somehow got greenlit was the Gladiator Challenge. Guests would compete against other guests or park-employed gladiators in an obstacle course and jousting matches. Jack McCallum in Remembering Action Park, America's Most Dangerous Daring Water Park, states, quote, Gladiator matches could lead to real violence. On one occasion, a guest who felt the gladiator he contended against had been too rough, striking him frequently on the head with the padded end of his pugil stick returned to the attraction in an effort to exact retribution. The gladiator called in support of his own, and eventually a brawl involving several dozen people broke out. The Vernon police had to be called in to restore order. One zone where no serious injuries were reported was the area of battle action tanks. For a small price, you could enter inside an enclosed area and operate a makeshift tank that shot tennis balls. The objective of this attraction was to hit a certain mark on other tanks with your tennis ball cannon, which would disable it for 15 seconds. One guest who got himself banned from Action Park doused the tennis balls in lighter fluid and began firing them at tanks and people. There were also prototypes and attractions which thankfully never made it to public use. Without a doubt, the craziest prototype was the Bailey Ball. A giant metal ball with you inside it would roll down a set path made of PVC pipe. The day finally came when Mulvihill demanded to test it with a live man. Everything looked good until the PVC pipe had expanded due to the summer heat, and the piping collapsed, but the ball kept going. Bouncing down the ski slope into a parking lot, it kept rolling through Route 94 until it came to an abrupt halt in a nearby swamp. The man inside the ball miraculously survived with minor injuries, but one can only imagine what happened to him in there. Despite many citations for safety violations between 1979 and 1986, including allowing minors to operate rides and failing to report accidents, which was unique among New Jersey's amusement parks. It was later disclosed that the park only reported those accidents when someone had to be transported in an ambulance. After the 1987 drowning of Gregory Grandchamps, the tidal wave pool was reportedly considered a pool by the state not a ride. Under state regulations at the time, that meant the company merely had to keep the water clean and make sure that certified lifeguards were on duty. Action Park may have seen initial success, but 
After the deaths of six individuals and countless injuries, the park's reputation began to crumble. A state investigation led to a 110-page indictment against the companies that operated at the park. This investigation began because Eugene had created a fake insurance company called London and World Assurance. The New York Times in 1985 explained that Action Park's parent company, Great American Recreation, quote, between 1977 and 1981, counterfeited paperwork and created a bogus insurance company to execute an elaborate self-insurance scheme that defrauded state agencies, Vernon, and private companies. Mulvihill pleaded guilty to five insurance fraud-related charges but faced almost no punishment under his plea bargain. He was fined $45,150, personally responsible for $250,000, and put on probation for three years. Even after all of this, Eugene was able to waltz back into his lead position at Action Park. However, things would never be the same because of low attendance rates and a series of insurance frauds. By 1997, Action Park was completely shut down and sold to Canada-based IntraWest, which now operates the property as Mountain Creek Water Park. Action Park had been a pillar of childhood memories for many people who grew up in the Northeast United States. While making this video, I found out my mom even shared fond experiences there with my grandfather. Chris Gethard, a writer for Weird New Jersey, said that, quote, Action Park was a true rite of passage for any New Jerseyan of my generation. When I get to talking about it with other Jerseyans, we share stories as if we are veterans who served in combat together. I suspect that many of us have come closest to death on some of those rides up in Vernon Valley. I consider it a true shame that future generations will never know the terror of proving their grit at New Jersey's most dangerous amusement park. Action Park and its defenders often pointed out that it was one of the first water parks in the nation, pioneering ideas that were later widely copied. The Mountain Creek Ski Area had been sold in 2010 to a group of investors who bought the land. Guess who led the group? Eugene Mulvihill. Why did he come back? Maybe he wanted to redeem himself. Perhaps he wanted to make an even deadlier park. However, Eugene wouldn't get a chance to see his park actually return because he passed away in 2012. Just two years later, Action Park would make its triumphant return and most people embraced it with open arms. At the start of the season in 2014, as a way to seemingly memorialize Eugene, they changed the name back to Action Park. It launched with new attractions, leadership, and improved safety measures, but for unknown reasons, the name Mountain Creek Water Park was restored, and Action Park was finally laid to rest. This summer, catch the action at Action Park. There's nothing in the world like it.